Kumba. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris Wild. Welcome to another exciting edition of Breaking the Fourth Wall. In this episode, we will be reviewing things that we just don't even know what to talk about because, quite honestly, there's no itinerary today. But first, let me introduce you to my panel. Panel, this is the panel, this is the listeners, all one of them. Everybody say hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, you want individual introductions. Okay, first and foremost, making his triumphant return to breaking the fourth wall after a couple hiatuses because his alarm didn't wake him up in time, Mr. Eric Batista. Hello, everyone. Of course, it's not the limelight that breaking the fourth wall sits in, it's just the light shining off his head, Mr. Dan Laria. Oh, thanks, Just one of these days, a nice introduction would be appreciated. All I'm saying. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> God? <laughs> oh, that shit again? No. We also have Miss Cheryl. Hello. And once again, <laughs> she's got a mouth like a trucker. Luckily, she drives like one, too. Miss Nikki Nicole. Sarcasm, I like it. Sarcasm, dripping. <laughs> <coughs> the sarcasm is strong with this one. I only have two things to bring to the table tonight, guys. So we'll make this quick, and then I'll let the uh, I'll let the animals out of the zoo for a little bit here. Uh, the two things I'll bring to the table first and foremost, most important to my heart, Star Wars. <coughs> this week, Ron Howard <laughs> went went to Twitter and officially announced that they are finished. Uh, Production, uh, filming production of the Han Solo Star Wars story. And what made the big deal about this is he gave the official title, finally unveiling the official title to the Han Solo standalone movie. The title being Solo, a Star Wars story. <laughs> My question to the panel, guys. How exciting is that? <laughs> is that title? Uh, you know, to me like an afternoon uh, special on TAPC. You know, I just hope that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I think they're going to come up with Nintendo so they can use It's Dangerous to Go Alone as a tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, we knew it was going to be a young Han Solo movie. We knew it was going to be a prequel of Han Solo's life, kind of how he got the Millennium Falcon, Chewbacca, stuff like that. This movie has already taken a lot of crap from firing Lord, uh, Lords and Miller, uh, taking about six months for Ron Howard to refilm almost everything. And the biggest news we get out of it is the deci deciding factor of the name of the title is going to be the most boring title in honestly movie history uh, on top of everything else should we uh, be worried about this film <laughs> honestly with a title like solo it sounds like a you know a memoir of the eternal bachelor you know rather than star wars related <laughs> yeah yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> You you give way more credit to to, to, fan, to the fan base of movies out there thinking that Americans care about soccer. Really, they don't. And nobody care. No offense, I love them to death, but nobody cares about John Solo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just rude on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Johnny, but no. <laughs> the second news. <laughs> that, that that was easy enough. I just want I wanted to pick on. I love Ron Howard. Ron Howard is one of the things that gives me hope for for the Han Solo movie. But that is the weakest title I've ever heard. Um, but on to the second new uh, piece of news that we got to bring out. 
This one's a little darker, and I'm actually happy we have some females on the cast today because I want to get their side and their opinion. And that is the big controversy in Hollywood right now. The return of the unfortunate darker side of Hollywood, the casting couch, in the form of Harvey Weinstein. Uh, of, uh, the, the, Did I pronounce his last name? Yep. Return, and the, the casting couch never left. It never left, but it came back yep. to the forefront because of people like, uh, I don't even want to say Mr., pieces of shit like Harvey Weinstein, who used ab and abused their power to exploit women in the probably the worst possible ways you ever could. Um, I definitely want to get everybody's opinion on this. I mean, first off, as, as we first brought out, is the fact that the casting couch never really ideal never really went away but it was not brought to the forefront in a long time until recently and especially with more and more women coming forward on on uh offenses that that miss uh yeah again i wanted to call him mr piece of shit weinstein had committed on so many different uh potential starlets and uh i just want to get everybody's opinion on this Dan, I'll start with you. Okay. I thought you would start with the women, but... Um, well, I'm saving the women for last, because I, I imagine they have the strongest opinions. What the actual... I mean, it, 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 you know, my opinion is, is going to be a little obvious on this, I would think. First of all, I, I guess... Being sexually Italian doesn't mean I still can't be naive about things. Even though I have a degree in radio television and film from Temple University, silly me, I thought that the Calston Couch was a piece of our, our history. I didn't know that that was actually still going on. Um, so I was both shocked and offended. Um, I... I I don't even know where to begin. I just hope that this is something that is brought to the forefront, that if it's going to be brought to the forefront, somebody's actually going to do something about it in a logical <coughs> fashion that actually is going to make a difference, and, and we're not going to go too far in the other direction with it. And, and I can explain that in a minute if you want me to. Um, but, you know, let's not be all shocked and awe that this is actually happening. If people knew that this was happening for, what, 20 or 30 years? And now everybody is going to be like, you know, jump on, on top of this. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, if you knew it was happening for 30 years, why don't we actually stop? Okay, uh, yes, point the finger at the guy that, that was doing it. But let's, let's make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I think, and let's not overreact to this. Let's properly react to this so that it, it, it just, it stops in a logical fashion, okay? Um, I'll give you the best example I possibly can. Uh, there are so many laws in the books right now because people don't know how to act. So they go out of their way to put these laws on the books so that things don't happen again. Um, I, I'm not going to say whether I agree with, with people having guns or not having guns. What I'm going to say is that we're, we have laws on the books now because, you know, we're trying to stop people from shooting each other, which I think is a very good thing. I don't think people should shoot each other. You know, maybe with footballs, but uh, I don't know. Um, but they're not, they're, what the laws in the books are to control the people that actually would use the laws in the first place, what are we doing about all of the guns that are coming in and out of the country through the black market? Are we stopping that, or are we just, oh, we have, we have strong laws now? For the people that would have already obeyed the laws in the first place, okay? So if, if we're going to do something about the count, the casting couch, let's actually do something about it. 
Well, the, I think I think part of the problem is, and and I, again, the la- the ladies will definitely give a better uh, better standpoint than I will on this. But I think one of the major problems with like things like the casting couch still happening is that these these dinosaur movie producers, mu- uh, music uh, moogles, and 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 stuff of that nature, you know, who have been in power so long, have been getting away with it for so long because nobody has been stepping forward. Even in the case of Harvey Weinstein and Eric, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, they are hailing the women uh, who are coming forward on this on on Harvey Weinstein. Uh, as, as heroes for finally coming forward, and I, to an extent, I agree. But to me, you waited so long to say something. I'm not excusing. Okay. I'm not excusing. I'm not excusing what Harvey has done. What I'm saying is, shouldn't this have been addressed a lot sooner before a lot more victims had happened? Right, but here's the thing. I mean, and I'm glad to guess that I'm a male, not a female. But. <coughs> Last Can you say Because I'm, I'm on the other side of the spectrum. You know what I mean? The females will be able to better because, you know, it is related to a female. Of course, what I say about it is, God, I, I, it, it just it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand out to, to know that, that this guy, hypocrite, did this stuff. I mean, I was reading this recently. Yes, they asked me I read the article. That one of the gymnasts that won a gold medal, one of the trainers, and it, it, it just sticks into my stomach to know that this this stuff is going on in this world. Actually, it was the doctor that was giving uh, all of the underage gymnast females um, their their medicals. Oh, the, so phys- the, the that, doctor that getting the physical. That goes even beyond the, that goes yeah. even beyond the pale of, of discussing. Yeah. But still, you we're, we're, it kind it kind of still falls under the same. It still kind of falls under the same uh, avenue. I think is a person is it still comes down to a person in a place of trust and a position of power using sexual advance. To exploit young women to kind of, in a sense, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Manipulate their dreams for their own further for, for future gains. What I mean by that is, okay, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a highly uh, respected uh, record <laughs> record producer, and a young lady wants to be a singer on my on my label. Well, okay, she's kind of got the talent, she's definitely got the look, whatever, but I'm not going to sign you unless you uh, do me a couple favors. That's abuse of power. Correct. Uh You know, not only is it exploitation on the woman, but it's also abuse of your authority and power. And that could go anywhere. If I'm a doctor, I'm in a position of trust with the Hippocratic Oath of do no harm, well, sexual assault is harm. Ladies, I've been I've been saving you guys for the last because I know this this is this is where what Harvey should get is going to come from. So, I will start with the quietest one. Uh Oh my god, uh Candace, right? Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl, thank you. <laughs> sorry. Oh I'm sorry. They they will tell you I am horrible with new names. I am horrible with new names. Forgive me. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Well, my thing is, is that, okay, misogyny has been alive and well in this country, well, actually all over the world, since the world has been here. Uh, this thing was... Uh, the shit stain. Uh, <laughs> pardon my French, but that's what he is. Uh, he's like a boil on the ass of humanity. And but people have a tendency to blame the victim, and they they're doing it now with these women that are coming forward. And you kind of did it a little bit by saying, "Well, why didn't you say something thirty years ago?" Well, you don't know if they did say something. Because what happens a lot true. of the times is these people are being reported and nothing is done. 
because of the people that are above them or the person that has the more money. And I know from being in that situation that I reported people that nothing ever happened. And then somewhere down the line, somebody who knew somebody or didn't know somebody that I did know and they told and then pretty soon there was like 20 or 30 people and they did the same thing. They said, well, why didn't somebody say something a long time ago? Uh, yeah, we did. People have been saying stuff about him for years. There was a thing from um, Courtney Love 12 years ago and they've been playing that. Granted, it was just like a short little thing, but they asked her what her advice to young women was. And she said that if Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party at the Four Seasons, don't go. Now that tells you right there that it was a well-known thing in Hollywood and that they were trying to warn people, but he has the money, he has the power, not over just those young women, but over some of these other people that could do something about him. But that's why I'm glad everybody's coming forward now, and hopefully he'll get prosecuted, because that's what he needs, is to get prosecuted. <laughs> and I want people to stop blaming the victim, because everybody has, a, not everybody, but a lot of people have a tendency to do that, and especially in Hollywood. Well, they're... They're adults. Well, no, they weren't all adults. That's number one. Some of the ones that he was doing this to were like, you know, 11, 12, and 13 years old. And he was abusing them. So, no, they're not all adults. And then even if they were an adult, it's like what you just said a few minutes ago. He's using his, his uh, position of power to get one over on her. And most of the time, they have no, nowhere else to go. Like, okay, somebody from Ohio. I live in Ohio. And I'm going to go to Hollywood. And I just up and go to Hollywood. What am I going to do if I don't get a job acting? I'm stuck there now. I, I'm only, whatever, 18, 19, 20 years old, and I don't have any money, I don't have a job, and then I've got this guy saying, oh, well, the only way you're going to get in here is if you do this, that, and the other thing, and then you, like, slough it off and go to somebody else, and then they do the same thing, because I have friends that are actors, and one woman, friend of mine, told me that she had gone to seven different, different auditions and every single one of them tried to get her in the sack before they would offer her a job. They didn't even want her to audition. They just wanted her in the sack. They didn't care what she did. They, you could be the worst actress in the world as long as you have sex with them, then that's fine. But she finally got somewhere because she held out and she waited for the one that didn't do that. But what are these people supposed to do that can't hold out? So, you know, that that's my problem is when people blame the victims. I have a really big problem with that. So sorry to go on so long. Now I'll let Nick talk. <laughs> well, no, it, that, that, that's absolutely fine. And I just, I, I, I personally, before Nikki does, I just want to make a clarification. Um, I did not blame the victim. I was asking Eric a question. Um, yes, I did. I did kind of have that feeling of like, well, why didn't they say something sooner? And you're absolutely right. There are many times and many cases where people just ignore when it is being said. I mean, that that's not just in Hollywood or in entertainment. That happens, you know, every day out on the street. A woman, you know, gets uh, sexually assaulted and she tries to go to the cops and everybody's, you know, everybody wants to play that while well, she was asking for it. Look at the way she was dressed or the situation she was under. Let me be perfectly right. or, clear. Or, or she's drunk. Right. Let me I'm be sorry, perfect. Let me be perfectly clear in this to every single swinging dick listening on this on this podcast. There is no excuse to ever sexually advance on a woman, no matter how inebriated she is, how she is dressed, how she is conducting herself, unless you have. 100% consent. Otherwise, it is a form of rape, if not flat out rape. Know your boundaries. 
Can I just jump in there for one minute? Absolutely. Unless please. you were going to say something else. No, please. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, because I'm sure you all know about that swimmer that raped that woman, and he only got six months, and then he only served three, and he it's positively known that he raped her. She was unconscious, and he gave chase because he didn't want the police to get him. So it's not like he wasn't aware that he did anything wrong, but he still tried to use the excuse. He kept changing the story every five seconds. One time he said he was too drunk and he didn't remember having sex with her. And then the next time he said, oh, well, she had, he had her consent. And then when he found out there were witnesses, because two guys, and they were from Sweden, and they were riding their bicycles, and they saw him on top of her, and she was unconscious. And they chased him, and they held him for the police until the police got there. So then when he found out that these guys actually came forward as witnesses, then he changed his whole story and said that he, he had consent, and it was consensual. He was still saying consensual, even though there were witnesses saying that that's not true, that she was unconscious. And then here's what bothers me the most about the whole thing, and when you look at comment sections of any kind of a post, looking in some of these comment sections, and especially some of the women that were making these comments, I'd, I'd like to smack them upside the head. They were saying that it was her fault because she was drunk. Okay, now, no, that's not right, and it's not, and it's not okay if he was drunk. But he wasn't that drunk. If he knew enough to try to get away from the police, then he wasn't drunk. And one thing I can tell you for sure, and Nikki can tell you this too, there is no woman on this planet that wants a pine cone shoved up her because that's what he did. That's part of what he did. Unless and no woman wants that, none. There, yeah, there's not one on the planet that wants that. He only got six months and only served three, and the reasoning that the judge gave was that, well, that would unduly ruin his life if he has to serve the entire six months. That's why this stuff still goes on, because the courts and people like that judge let it happen. Because even if you do go to court, most of the time they make you out like, like you're some kind of a slut or something, even though there's laws, the rape shield laws, that say that they can't talk about what you were wearing or if you have a boyfriend or if, if, if you have a bunch of boyfriends or if you have sex every day or if you have sex with 20 different guys, what difference does that make? Or even if you're a prostitute, you can be a prostitute and you can still get raped. Well, let me. I, I there are some wanna... people that will say that that's not true, so I'll, I'll stop there because I got to give Nikki a chance. Sorry, Nikki. Well, no, that, that that's fine. I definitely I definitely want to come back to this, but I want to let Nikki talk first because I got a couple questions. And again, it's not it, it's not for the the questions I'm asking is not because I'm trying to make excuses for the for the situations that they're under, but just for clarifications for the people that are listening. So we'll definitely get back to that. But Nikki, let's get your thoughts on on Harvey Weinstein. You know, I'm not, believe it or not, I'm not a pussy to lambast him the way a lot of people have. Now, don't confuse that for me defending the guy. I'm not. However, um, a mob is a monster without a brain in it. Putting one's fate up to the court of public opinion is a lose-lose situation. What you're asking for is a scenario akin to, you know, the rating of the Bastille, the French Revolution. Everyone's out for blood, and in the end, they're only going to be craving more. And what I feel this is doing is put a lot of men who necessarily, you know, didn't ever, you know, are not sexual predators, never committed sexual assault against, you know, other men or women. But that's very, very important because it does happen to men, and it's severely underreported because of our how mm-hmm. society. Um, so far, of the reported rates, twelve percent are actually of men, um, and it's not clear whether or not this is reported from prisons, for example, or from you know outside of it in day-to-day life. But the fact is, you know, women aren't the only ones abused. <clears throat> um, I do have a slightly 
different perspectives because I am a full driver. I am a predominantly run by men. I have had, you know, job offers, for example, from various smaller business owners out here like, hey, you know, I'll pay you a lot. I'll give you good miles. Um, you, can get, you get to be home very often. And in my head, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it sounds really good to be, you know, too good to be true. And usually it is because not long after, it's like, like you swap contact information. If I don't put out like uh, sexual pictures, usually that's what's requested. And all of a sudden, I'll never hear from these men again. Um, you know, you get out of the shower and then someone will suddenly start just sniffing your hair. I mean, this has happened to me. Just the other day, you know, I was at a shipper. I was dropping off a load and a guy, uh, you know, a friendly fellow, I don't really think he meant anything wrong, uh, basically said, you know, oh, you know, you also write books. So well, if you, uh, you know, come and hit me up, well, next time we're out here, go on a date or something, I'll review it for you. Like, I'm not that cheap. But you smile and nod because it's just such a day-to-day -day part of lives. And if you make a big stink out of it, well, guess what? It's going to go up the food chain somehow and there are going to be repercussions, usually financially. And when you have bills to pay or, you know, you know, sick family or something else to look after, you have to take it. And that's the problem. With women, it's become expected. It's a part of our lives. If you are female, if you are identifiably female in a public setting, you know, if you get some sort of form of harassment, it's just part of being the gender that we are. And that's an inexcusable correlation. And this is what the real, you know, kerfuffle of the whole situation is. It isn't about the fact that he, you know, molested or assaulted or raped these women. It's the fact that it's such an ingrained part of society and how women are having enough. They're saying we're tired of it. I don't want, you know, our daughters or our children or our sisters or our mothers. They don't even have to be related to us. Because there's always going to be a woman who is dressed, you know, a little bit more scantily. They're going to be walking in a darker part of town and going to be a little bit more drunk. She has every single right to her bodily and autonomy to feel safe on the streets as any other one. And that's the real issue. The fact that we live in an age where we can accomplish so much and we do so much and this is still on the table. Alright, I'm done ranting. <laughs> no, that's absolutely that's absolutely correct. And that, the questions I wanna uh, the questions I wanna ask on you uh, you guys on this, you know, um I understand and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start this off with uh <laughs> with the understanding that I know this has been going on since, you know, little boys discovered they like girls. You know, so basically, like, since the beginning of time, sexual harassment, particularly against women, has always been happening. Whether it's something as, I don't want to use the term innocent, but for lack of better term, something as harmless as saying, hey, baby, to something as very invasive as sexual advances, rape, stuff of that nature, <coughs> do you think <coughs> that part of the situation in today's society could be could be because of the fact that one people are taking way too much offense on both sides We're taking way too much offense in this politically correct culture that we have and two part of the issue being how many uh, it's coming more and more to light how many false a uh, accusations of harassment and rape have been put against people or, you know, uh, because of the fact that the person just regretted having <laughs> sex with the person or whatever the case may be. Again, I'm not trying to blame the victims, but it has been coming more and more as of late in society. Do you think that has a factor on ha women having such a hard time being able to come forward and and be taken seriously when they do have a legitimate uh, uh, case against somebody for, for these types of actions? Um, I'll, I'll jump in, Cheryl. Oh, good. Uh, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait till you're done. <laughs> All right. So with regard to the uh, falsely accusing men or even women of rape by other women, usually, uh, it, it has been known to happen. The more the situation comes to light, the more common it is. The more, just as much as the more guns are in society, the more likely someone to fire one. You know, just statistics. 
Right. It does give women a name, and it makes it harder to argue the case because it's already stacked against us. You know, just you know, the odds of people believing us and then doing something about it. On top of it, because of the personal nature of the crime, some people take it very differently. <laughs> Taylor Swift, for example, um, took a man to court for groping her um, while there was a photo being taken on the red carpet. You know, she spent it very hush hush. She was very quiet, but the fact that she was willing to go as far as to take it to a judge, you know, she was making a point. To her, that might have affected her as much as, let's say, the actual action of a rape to another woman. You know, was a little bit more down on her luck. You know, it really, really depends because who can say how we respond to someone when you, someone tells you that you hurt them? You don't have the option to say you didn't. And on top of it, when you take it to a court, how do you quantify that level of pain if we, you know, lack the ability to truly empathize with another human and measure it? You can't. So, you know, there's an element of, well, it's in the past, you're going to have to get over it. And that's the thing. That is probably the most insulting factor of it all. Speaking as a woman who has been harassed or has been assaulted, um, I will say this much. The biggest slap in the face... And the unfortunate reality we have to face is that life moves on. <laughs> and there's an element that not even, you know, nature has this justice out for you. So either you take it in your own hands or you suck it up with your big girl panties on and keep on moving, which of course shouldn't happen. You should be allowed time to grieve if you need it. Um, like me, personally, I've always been more of a doer. I just like to, you know, put it aside. If nothing can be done about it, I'll go on building my life. And that's exactly what I did in my circumstance. You know, um, but like I said, with women coming out and some of them lying about it, it makes situations bad for men. It makes situations bad for other women who actually do need um, to advocate to what happened to them. So I'll leave that at that. <laughs> All right. Cheryl? Well, um, as someone who also has been abused and assaulted in various ways, I won't say what was done to me, but uh, I was able, in one instance, to have something done about it, and it was satisfying the way that it ended up to me. But what I don't like, and I don't like it about anything that happens to somebody, whether it's you know, rape or assault or being grabbed somewhere or even just like say if, if your husband died, uh, somebody telling you what you're supposed to feel. Oh, it's been two years. You should be all over your husband being dead. Well, excuse me, that, that doesn't, things don't work that way. Everybody handles everything like what Nikki was saying. Everybody handles everything in a different way. And just because somebody else needs a little bit of more time doesn't mean that they're wrong or there's something wrong with them. And if they need less time, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them. Because I know the other way around where people will say, oh, well, your husband's only been dead one month. Oh, you're disgusting for getting married after only one month. Well, who are you to decide how somebody is supposed to feel about anything? And it would be the same thing like that. Just just because the way I am, I want to get the guy. I want to get him, and I want to get him as good as I can, if it's possible. If not, then I, I just suck it up and I move on. But if I know somebody that can't do that, they can't suck it up, and, and they're like lost in this deep, dark depression, which I did have a very good friend that that happened to, she went into a deep, dark depression because she did take it to court, and even though there was proof, she got away with it, and so she was stuck in this depression and ended up killing herself. Because everybody was telling her she should just suck it up. Well, you know, you, you, you can't tell somebody else how to deal with anything. That, that's yeah. the thing that I don't like about any of it. Or how long it takes somebody. Because look at these people that have um, incest committed against them. Like if it's their father. They may not say anything for 30, 40, 50 years. Doesn't mean it or didn't happen. Brother. Yeah, yeah. 
brother, uncle, or, you know, female side, uh, all right, and mother or, you know, anything, because anybody, and I'm not just saying women, because there are men that get abused as well, and not always by other men. Because I was talking to somebody the other day, and they tried to insinuate that the only men that get abused are homosexual men that, that have male partners, and the men are abused. And I'm like, no, that's not true, because there are a lot of women that are abusive. And by abusive, I mean physically abusive. They'll smack the guy around, and it's because they know that that particular guy that they're with is going to let them do it, and that's why they do it. And it's the same thing with the guys that are abusive. Why do they do that? Because they know they pick out particular women, and that's how they end up with them. And that's why I never ended up with a guy like that, because the first guy that I was going to marry, before we got married, we moved in together. And I said, look, I said, here's my main thing. If you ever hit me, you will die in your sleep. And he said, well, I would never hit a woman. And I said, I've heard that a lot from a lot of guys. I'm just letting you know. And he never did. He never hit me, ever. And he was the most gentle man in the world. But I know of other women that they would say the same thing, their husband that they were going to marry. Oh, I'd never hit a woman. They were really nice to him going out and everything. Then as soon as they got married, they, they turned into the hound from hell and was beating them and everything because now they knew that the woman was stuck and my mother was one of those that was stuck in one of those situations because that was in the 60s she didn't know that my father was abusive so when she married him and she was in love with him and where is she going to go in the 60s and she had four kids <laughs> she really didn't have much to do back in the 60s because a lot of times they wouldn't give women work so I'm sorry, I'll stop now so somebody else can say something. Oh, not a, not a problem. Well, I, 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 I could definitely, I could definitely uh, bring, it, bring it up to you because you, br you brought up a very good point. Um, oh, my, brain, my brain is farting here for a second here. Um, with with, with uh, kind of flipping the coin here and talking about how there are, you and Nikki both uh, brought it up about how there are men who are abused as well. Not only sexually, but, you know... Uh, physically emotionally i think the biggest thing that a lot of people don't don't realize yeah okay uh most men that take the physical abuse are the type of men who were actually raised right to know better than to hit a woman or something of that nature so they won't defend themselves but majority of what causes men to go into deep depression and is a true form of abuse that for some reason is not recognized with men and dan defend me on this you know or, or speak your piece because you're next on this is the fact that there are a lot of women who just dog down their men. Um, I'd say I'd say it's almost more predominant of a woman talking down to, berating, destroying the confidence of her man than there is on the opposite end of the coin. You know where on the op, you know when you flip the thing, women are more physically abused. It seems like men are more emotionally abused. Am I, am I wrong in that? I would disagree. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it happens any less. <coughs> because there are a lot of women that they're not physically abused. But they are emotionally, mentally, and, and uh, all the other abuses except the physical and sexual, they get all those abuses. But the uh, husband or boyfriend or whatever, they're very careful not to do any physical abuse, but they do abuse them. And it happens a lot with women, a lot more than what is reported, because a lot of women don't even re and, and men don't even realize that that's abuse. Because my father was like that, although he did, he was physically abusive too, but I, I mean, as far as beating, he didn't do any sexual abuse, right. but he beat us all the time, but he was very emotionally abusive, and by that, I mean, he would beat us to a pulp, and then say, oh, I love you, and then beat us again. Yeah, that's very emotionally abusive. And then he would always tell us that we were idiots and we were never going to grow up to be anything. And if you grow up like that, you don't have to 
and this is where I differ with some people, you don't have to grow up like that. How do I know? Because I had that life, and I didn't grow up like that. I never abused anybody. I never hit anybody that didn't hit me first. And I never beat on a kid. I never hurt a kid, even though I was abused as a kid. Nothing like that ever happened, and neither did any of my siblings. And there were a lot of us that were, get, were getting beat every day. And we never did anything like that. So when they try to use that excuse, oh, that happened to me when I was a kid. Oh, oh yeah, well, boo-hoo. That was when you were a kid. You're responsible for what you do. That's what you're responsible for. If you're doing it, it's your fault. It's not your parents' fault. It's your fault if you're doing it. Now, that said, but it does happen, I think, the other abuses besides physical and sexual. I think it happens just as often as it does with women. I will say that much. Now, sorry that I went so long. That's all right. Uh, Dan, you're, you're, I, was, I was directing it at you, so we'll, 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 we'll let you pick up. Um, I mean, I think men and women are just as capable of sexual, emotional, physical, psychological, um, every type of abuse. Uh, I don't think that it, it's one versus the other. I think in your case, in my case, in our first marriages, we it was just an unfortunate situation for both of us. Um, I mean, hell, my, my current wife hit me in the arm today. Like, you know, we were clattered around, and I know she was frustrated about something or other that had absolutely nothing to do with me. And she got feisty, and then she said, I'm going to kick your butt, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, go ahead. I literally gave her my arm to hit. She hit me in the arm, and she wound up hurting her wrist. Now, who was the abuser there? Her, because she hit me, or me, because I had such a strong arm that, like, she hurt herself. You know? Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things where... I think in order to make my point, I, I like to tell stories. Uh, and Chris, you know this about me. <laughs> when, <laughs> when I got married the first time, my first wife was very young. She was right out of high school. I was right out of, well, I should have been right out of college. I took time off. And we were just, you know, back in... In our parents' day, it was okay to get married at 18 to 19 for a girl and 20, 23 for a guy, whatever, you know, 22, 23. But things changed. Now, I, I think 19 and, and 22 is way too young to get married in this day and age. But at the time, you know, we thought it was the right thing. We thought we were badly in love. We thought we were the ones for each other. But... We were at just, she came from a very abusive family, the whole family, okay? And <laughs> whether they realize it or, or not or want to admit it or not, I, I don't think I'm really talking out of turn here, and I'm not even trying to be mean about this. Um, I don't think she was ever told that she was worthwhile her entire life. I don't know. So... You know, when when she, when my, my uh, if whoever's talking in the background, if you guys could uh, give me the courtesy of, of letting me have the floor right now. Um, when my ex got into a relationship with me, because all she ever knew was being abused, she didn't know how to handle not being abused. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. But I know that the entire time we were together, she was constantly projecting on me. Um, I'm not using any names. Uh, I don't make it public knowledge who I was married to the first time, so I think I can say this. We broke up because my first cheated on me. When I approached her and I said, why did you do it? She said, well, because I know you've been cheating on me the whole time, so I, you know, I figured if you were doing it, I was doing it. Now, the problem I have with that is that I never cheated on her, and because she projected that I was, she thought it was okay for her to do it back. Well, you can't do it back if it wasn't done in the first place. But, 
again, because she was abused all her life, it, it was hard for me to say, okay, well, that was pretty shitty thing for you to do. It's like, okay, it is what it is. But here's the thing. I can forgive you for what you did, but if you're going to constantly accuse me of doing something that I'm not doing, that's where I have to draw the line. Now, was that abuse? I don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, we have a panel talking about it. Maybe you guys can tell me. But I know, from my point of view, if you're going to accuse me of something that I'm not doing, that in itself is its own form of abuse. And, and there's two things that I will not tolerate ever. Chris, you've known me the longest. You know this about me. Do not lie to me and do not accuse me of something that I'm not doing, including lying, because that's where I will say, you know what? End of friendship, end of relationship. We're done. That's not entirely true. No, that sounds like me. No, he, he's absolutely right. But uh, let me let me go ahead and get to Eric here because I know Eric's chomping at the bit to talk to Eric. I've known you almost twenty years now, and through that time, you and I have been through our ups and downs in relationships with females. We have been we have been the quintessential players and and dirt ball boy uh, guys, and we have been die hard true lovers who have been in less than savory relationships. My question to you, not only besides what we're discussing here, but my direct question to you, give us some of the warning signs from your experiences that you could project to our listeners of things to watch out for, not only for sexual abuse, but also for phys- uh, signs of physical or emotional uh, attacks against you or, or the warning signs that that person may be that type of person. Uh, I mean, but- I think two relationships that I, of uh, my parents, um, was mostly a lot with like verbal abuse towards me. Um, pretty much, the, the, the things that were said, it, it really like, I just basically said, you know what, I was just gonna keep it to myself. And eventually, after so many times to hear it, I explode. And, it, it hurts because you, the mental abuse is it's really what I suffer the most, the uh, especially with two girls I ever dated. <laughs> but the way they made me feel and stuff like that, it makes me like say, well, you know what? Well, if I know if I was to end this relationship today, I don't think I'm going to go out there tomorrow and find somebody. You know, that, that would treat me bad, and everything like that. You know, and it's very hard. You know, I mean, I, like I said, when this guy talked about it, uh, I don't want to bring the, the girls' names that have done it to me. I just think out of respect for them, you know, I just keep it to myself. It's in my past. I'm, I'm moving forward. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a common ground thing when I go by. You can read some money in the beginning, and pretty much you go a whole year. Everything's hunky dory. You know, the birds chirping, you know, the buzzes are buzzing. <laughs> oh, happy, I'll go lucky. After that year, people change. Then you start seeing the other side of the person, especially when you live with them. Then you really get to know who they are. I'm always straightforward how I am, why we're dating, and how I will be. I'm the same way. I don't change. If you don't like it, go ahead and go. I'm not holding you here. That's pretty much how I am. You know, I don't care. The girls that I've dated in the past, the ones that that hurt me really bad, I don't talk to them no more. You know, it's a tough subject. It it very much is. And I, I, I definitely want to close this subject with this statement here, and I think everybody in the panel will support me in this. Uh, to every listener out there, guy or girl, uh, married, single, you know, whatever the case may be, no form of abuse, sexual advance, verbal, emotional, or physical is okay. If you're in that situation, you need to find a way to get out of it. 
if you have lived through that situation, talk to somebody. If, if you're not if you're not going to search for uh, 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 legal actions, at least still find somebody, a friend, a relative, a psychiatrist, whatever, to talk to. Open up. Don't allow that to be bottled up inside of you. And the major thing is always remember it is not okay. In any way, shape, or form, it is not okay. And 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 add on to that, Chris. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're straight, bi, cat, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Every type of formal relationship, male, male, female, 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 male, male. It, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship you're in. There's all type of abuse, verbal, mental, everything. You know, it doesn't matter what your preference is. Abuse. Verbal, mental, assaulting, it's out there. And that's why I'm saying you got you to come forward and never accept <laughs> no for an answer for coming forward. It's, we're talking about your safety and your well-being. In the end, always come forward, always find a way out of the situation, and always, always, please, for your own well-being, find somebody to talk to. Agreed. Well, I, I think that's one of the keys right there, Chris. It, it, if we're going to change our society so that the idea of physical, sexual, emotional, psychological abuse ends, then we need to start addressing the elephant in the room. Yes, it happens, okay? The person that it happened to and the person that started the action... Both of them, in my opinion, need someone to talk to. Both of them need counseling. Both of them need psychological help. Because when you look at how it started, and I think Cheryl was the one to mention that, oh, well, I was abused when I was a kid. Okay, that cycle needs to be broken. Because if you look at the statistics, most of the people that abuse were abused. So in order to stop the cycle, we need to understand as a society that if you've been abused as a child, then you're going to, there's a good possibility you're going to abuse as an adult. People need to start coming out. They need to start saying, you know what, I was abused. You know what, I'm an abuser. And they, as a society, we need to put in effect places where people can go and talk and get counseling and maybe break that cycle once and for all. And until we start looking at the situation from that point of view, it's not going to change. Well, I'll, I, I, when, uh, when we had the rash of suicides recently uh, of, of celebrities like uh, Chester Pennington and, uh, and Chris Cornell and stuff of that nature, I gave a public service announcement on breaking the fourth wall where if anybody was feeling that type of situation to con and you have nobody else to, t to contact, please feel free to contact us here at Realm of the Mist and Breaking the Fourth Wall. I'm extending that right now. Guys, please find somebody to speak to. There are hotlines, there are psychiatrists, there, like I said, there's family, there's friends. Uh, of course, there's the police. But if you're not comfortable with any of them, I feel I can speak for everybody within Realm of the Mist, contact us. Realm of the Mist Entertainment at gmail.com Sh Shoot us an email. Tell, tell us which one of us you want to talk to and we will respond. We, if, nobody else, if you feel nobody else will be there for you, we will happily do so. Because it's got to start somewhere. Additionally, if you don't want to talk to an authority and you just need someone to speak to but you don't want to make a big fuss about it, let us know and we will keep it just between us. Unless there is a real reason to worry for your safety. Okay? You know, same as any, you know, HIPAA code. You know, your confidentiality matters. <laughs> Cutting in there. That's absolutely it. So if you if you if you have no if you feel you have nobody to talk to, we will be that somebody for you. Please contact us. It's better than the alternative. 
Guys, this is normally the point of the show where I ask for the movie picks of the week, but unfortunately we did kind of run long on that on this very important subject. Uh, so I will go ahead and start us off uh, with Eric. Tell us where we can find you if somebody wants to talk to you. Yes, you can find me at Eric J. Batista Sr. on Facebook. I also can find me on the entertainment side of the day at Smoke 1437 on the Xbox One. Cheryl, where can they find you? Mainly on Facebook under Cheryl Mack, and it's also under Clara Barton. And I'm on Twitter, but I almost never go there. But And I'm on Instagram and all those other things, too. But the main one I use is Facebook. All right. Nikki, not, besides where can they find you, don't forget to tell them about your book, since you are a writer. Uh, well, you can reach me two main ways. Just like Cheryl, I have a Facebook page for books and writing. Um, I'm always keeping track of those messages. So you can find me at Nicole Martinson, M-A-R-T-I-N-S-E-N, um, and look up author. I'll pop right up. Or you can contact me through my email, which is used for business and personal, uh, ms.nicolemartinson at gmail.com. Um, Pretty simple, straightforward, and I will definitely respond within 24 hours. <coughs> All right. Dan, where can they find you? Well, as always, you can find me on Facebook. I actually have two friend availabilities. I'm down to 4,998, so if somebody wants to make a friend request, now would be the time. <laughs> you can reach me at, at Facebook slash Dan Maria. I'm not the guy from the Wonder Years. I'm the other one, okay? Um, if you go onto my Facebook, if I do not respond to my uh, personal message, and it, you, it's an emergency since we're putting this out there today, um, my email and my cell phone number are both on there. If you think it's an emergency, contact me. Um, you can also find me as well on uh, Realm of the Mist and uh, YouTube. Um, right now I'm doing a bunch of stuff for Talking Trek. Uh, so you can go to YouTube, Dan Laurie at Talking Trek. I don't know that I've actually ever gotten comments yet, but that's usually because I'm posting stuff from other people's um, channels about stuff that I might want to talk about on Talking Trek. But it is a, pos it is a way to get a hold of me, I guess. Um, that being said, don't leave anybody that's listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall, because on the next hour of our show, America's Pop Culture Magazine, we are going to be talking Trek, and you're going to want to listen, because I don't know what Cheryl or Nikki want to talk about, but I know for a fact you're going to want to listen to what Tris has to say about the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery. Oh... <laughs> Uh, is it, I, it, I do not want this uh, this series to live long and prosper. Yeah, you guys can find you, you, you guys you guys can find me on uh, realmofthemist.com. Uh, of course, I'm on Facebook. Uh, like Dan, my email and my phone number are available on my page, uh, my my Facebook page, which is Christopher Michael Stolle, S T O L L E. Uh, <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. I promise next week we'll get back into the uh, world of entertainment, more into the world of entertainment, and less into the world of pieces of shit like Harvey Weinstein. Until then, Radio Cast FM, stay tuned. Up next, Talking Trek. YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below. Hit the like button. Make us feel like we're actually special in some way. And always, always check out all the other great shows on realmofthemist.com. Have a good one.